Our next presentation is in English uh, language. Um, our speaker is Mr. Miklos Bas. He's from Hungary. He studied mining engineering and his professional life has always been related to concrete. Uh, he started working in the mining sector with concrete linings for tunneling. Um, and later on, he worked in the construction of the Budapest M4 Metro Line, including drilling, structural design, and shot grid. Uh, and in recent years, he has specialized in the development of different projects focused on construction, including the strong industrial floors uh, with shrinkage compensating concrete. And his experience in this sector, well, uh, allows him to be a consultant in both, uh, in both the design of the project and the actual application. And he's the CEO of Shrinkcomp, and uh, he collaborates with different companies in Europe to promote the use of different technologies. And today, he's presenting us an example of execution of an industrial floor with ring case compensating concrete technology with the appealing title of jointless Y, advantageous, uh, advantageous performances uh, and technical measurements. Okay, Mikl, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As you heard, uh, we came from Hungary and this presentation made by uh, my colleague, Ms. Kate Siladji, sitting over there, and me. And we would like to introduce you how we uh, work, how we use this technology, the joint lens for technology with shrinkage compensated concrete uh, in practice. So, uh, some words about who we are and uh, where we are from. Okay. So about us, uh, some word, as uh, uh, you can hear, uh, uh, we had two companies. Shrinkcomp is a, a company who designs floors and uh, provides uh, the special know-how such as how to build them and also how to carry on the quality uh, control on site. The other company of us with the same ownership and uh, 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 the same staff is uh, the Allen Face Europe company is about the surface regularity and uh, design and measurement and uh, a special uh, part of it the high, in high density warehouses the very narrow eyes uh, uh, giving or servicing uh, the regulation for the grinding company how can do it the uh, more economic way this so uh, what is it very useful to use these two sides? I, I used to say that it's two sides of the coin. The one is uh, the shrinkage compensating jointless floor, and the other is the, the measuring. I think uh, it gives real control, uh, the floor design, through the construction till the completely the facility operation. And, and it also helps uh, avoiding uh, uh, the unexpected uh, events uh, during the construction and after that. So uh, the point of view of us is meet demands of the facility and uh, the operation. So uh, some words about our masterminds. This gentleman, uh, the left hand side, uh, Mr. Alexander Klein, you know him, and uh, one interesting uh, details uh, with his life. Uh, you know, he discovered the uh, uh, CSA, the calcium sulfur aluminate uh, cement, late uh, 1950s in the United States uh, at uh, Berkeley University in Los Angeles. Uh, but uh, interesting for me that uh, his origin is Hungarian. Uh, he was two years old when he emigrated to the United States uh, with his parents and uh, made his career uh, this uh, Berkeley University. The other gentleman is Mr. Alan Face. Uh, Alan Face is perhaps the world's leading authority on the design, the construction, and the quality control of concrete floor slabs. And the third person is our founder, uh, Ms. Noemi uh, Nagy. She is, uh, now she is 32, 33, yes. Uh, and after his graduation in the Budapest Technical University, she went to the United States uh, to study uh, the shrinkage compensating uh, floors. And uh, during this uh, journey and during this uh, 
uh, trip. It was one and a half years long, a year long. Uh, she uh, met with another Hungarian person, of course, uh, Mr. Bob Guyash. Uh, uh, he was a student and colleagues of uh, Mr. Klein. And, and in an uh, American, uh, uh, the ACA Congress, uh, Ms. Noemi met with him and joined to him. And uh, uh, Mr. Gulash, uh, as a student of uh, Alexander Klein, uh, in this time, one of the biggest names of the shrinkage compensation concrete for uh, floor industry. And uh, also, uh, Ms. Noemi met and became a partner with Mr. Alan Face. It's important for me to tell about this because uh, after this one and a half year, Noemi came back to Europe, came back to Hungary and uh, established these two company the Shrinkham Bureau of the, and the Allen Face Europe company, so uh, and adapted the uh, European to the European circumstances, uh, these technologies. So we can say that we uh, study everything or we learn everything from the sources. The first part in my presentation is about the jointless industry and floor. Uh, it belongs to the uh, Shrinkham Europe activity. So uh, the question is, uh, what is shrinkage compensating concrete? Uh, the previous presentation you can heard about, I think, uh, so much uh, that how is it different from conventional concrete and uh, how we compensate the shrinkage with the uh, initial expansion. So I think it's not, uh, not necessary to speak uh, about this uh, too much. This uh, expansion mechanism is achieved by adding uh, calcium sulfur eliminate uh, cement in a certain uh, quantity. So uh, how the shrinking compensated concrete works, uh, it was, I think, it, the first presentation mentioned uh, the way uh, how it works. So, uh, that the point is the uh, expansion is to introduce the pre-compression uh, into the uh, concrete and uh, after seven days uh, when uh, the pre-compression uh, is offset when we remove uh, the curing uh, we get a floor slab without any stress so I would like to uh, show you some picture uh, how we work in uh, practice. So <coughs> uh, you can see uh, this uh, concrete is a, uh, uh, it's a reinforcement, it's a steel reinforcement. We put the reinforcement directly to the subgrade and uh, we, uh, when uh, it is, uh, on the subgrade, we uh, do not uh, put uh, uh, in the spacers down, you can see uh, there, uh, because in this case, if you put the spacers down in advance, uh, we would have to use uh, pump, and pump is in, in, in expensive. And also, we would have to uh, use uh, more fines in the concrete, and it doesn't help us, it's bad uh, for us. So we put uh, these spacers only uh, in, a, in a pass, uh, you know, th uh, three or four meter wide, where the mixer truck uh, discharge uh, the concrete only and moving, moving ahead, yeah? So uh, after uh, discharging, uh, it's a picture about the curing, uh, the uh, <laughs> We use uh, only water uh, for curing and we protect uh, the water from evaporation with a PE sheet. And after seven days, we uh, remove it and uh, uh, we uh, do the uh, surface hardener. We use uh, usually liquid surface hardeners. Some uh, words about uh, advantages of shrink comb joint less flow. As I mentioned, uh, we have only construction joints uh, <coughs> when we build uh, uh, these floors. 
the main advantage is that it is dramatically increased joint spacing. Uh, as you can see, this is a, a real plan. We did it in 2016 in Hungary. Uh, there are two uh, big panels, uh, almost 60 uh, uh, meters uh, long, because uh, this uh, technology, uh, with this technology, we uh, can build long and narrow panels, panels with uh, L-shaped, panels with special shaped, uh, because uh, it's uh, no problems with it, because there is no stress in the floor, in the concrete. So in these two panels, uh, the client's requirement that no joints and uh, no cracks uh, at all. And uh, we build it and uh, so fra far and uh, hopefully in the future, there is uh, not appeared any cracks. And uh, maybe we can go back to the other advantages you can uh, see. Uh, here, so yes, I mentioned there is no tracks, and uh, uh, we can reduce the floor thickness as well because of no stress stress from uh, shrinkage and no stress from the curling. So our way is to focus of our floor design is avoiding cracking, avoiding the random cracking, the curling and the delamination. So floor doesn't part of the structure. Structural engineers focus on uh, preventing uh, things from failing down. Uh, but slabs on grade uh, don't collapse. The grade is the structure and the slab is just a wear surface. Anders wants to limit the risk, risk from cracking, the curling, the joint instability, the delamination, spalling, rocking the panels. Uh, but for these problems, the answers have to give by a floor specialist or a floor designer, I think. So a part of the uh, floor design is the concrete mix <laughs> design and uh, <coughs> uh, uh, we design our floor to meet the requirements that I mentioned uh, in, the in the beginning that it uh, expand uh, as much as it shrinks later on over its li lifetime. The way we do the concrete mix design is to uh, go to the actual uh, concrete plants uh, that we are going to use, take all materials from these, the gravels, the sands, the cement, the admixtures, everything, and bring them all to our lab. It's a university lab in Budapest, but other country, it's uh, in another lab, and uh, prepare first the reference concrete. Of course, the reference uh, concrete have to be uh, low shrink ridge and uh, uh, high abrasive resistance concrete. And after, in a lab, we substitute uh, 20 kilogram cement uh, with calcium sulfur eliminate uh, agent, and we make the fresh concrete uh, properties to make sure that the design mixture has the sufficient sum flow and expansion and uh, the water content, uh, etc., what we uh, designed. So uh, this is a, a picture, it's a, a real uh, mix uh, design. As you can see, uh, the cement is uh, 300 kilogram and the <coughs> calcium sulfur aluminate uh, agent is 20 kilogram, and maybe uh, it's interesting for you, the water content uh, we designed it uh, was uh, 170 uh, liter. So uh, here is the expansion uh, result we got. Uh, we uh, kept under water uh, the specimen for seven days with the normal contract, is, you can see the red line and the shrinkage compensating with the blue line. 
and as I mentioned, the shrinkage compensated concrete expand as much as or a bit more than the later uh, shrinkage. Uh, we measure uh, the expansion and the shrinkage uh, every day with this length comparator and to, to monitor this. Some words about the quality control. Uh, we monitor at the site the fresh concrete uh, uh, properties and uh, in the lab the hardened uh, concrete properties. So uh, we uh, we <coughs> have to make sure that the concrete plan delivers the same composition that we design. Uh, so you can find some uh, numbers uh, which uh, uh, we have done, I think is the same uh, work as uh, the plan I show you before. Uh, here's an example of the daily report. Uh, we carry out the test uh, on site every day when the contractor pure the concrete. So that's about the shrinkage compensating concrete, how we use it in practice. The other side of the coins is the surface regularity and construction, considering the function of the facility. So we have to make sure to choose the best, I think. So think well in advance is the better we can do. So first we have to know that uh, uh, the uh, warehouse can be a conventional warehouse or manufacturing facility uh, or distribution uh, centers. Uh, use a conventional way, it means that uh, the lift trucks go random way. Or it will be a high density warehouse, you can see here. <coughs> uh, because the surface regularity <coughs> requirements are three or four uh, times uh, higher than for random traffic floors. So uh, we met uh, sometimes that the owner or the build who build uh, the warehouse don't know what is it using for and this can cause several problems. So the biggest one we met last year it uh, it caused extra cost 200,000 euro for the owner. So uh, <coughs> in the standards when we uh, built uh, floors, we use standards. Uh, the standards are from random traffic or defined uh, traffic floors. Uh, in Europe or in Hungary, uh, we can use the American standard, the TR34, uh, the English standard, or the German standard, the DIN. And the uh, same way, or like the similar way, uh, the FMIN uh, for uh, very narrow aisles, uh, and the English uh, standards for defined floor, and the DIN for defined floor, and the VDMA uh, standards. So, uh, because the owner's poor understanding of the prescribed uh, standards in the contract, uh, sometimes the final result doesn't coincide with the owner's uh, performance expectation. So, we think that the floor designer's liability is to inform the owners about how the floor is going to look like and how it's uh, going to uh, behave. So uh, the problem comes when, uh, uh, so what is supposed to happen after fall fails uh, the test? Uh, in random traffic uh, case, uh, the two main problem are that uh, they use only pass or fail criteri criterion only, no more. And <coughs> they uh, remain uh, silent, silent in silence, saying nothing about how to uh, remedy if uh, something is wrong. So I think we have to handle it. And uh, defined traffic floors, uh, you can s uh, see the problems. Uh, there are also the uh, remediation uh, problem, not easily located, and so on. So. <coughs> 
Uh, for example, with the DIN uh, 18202 uh, standard, doesn't explain precisely how to conduct the test. It's uh, talking about the gap under the straight edge, but uh, use two different ways, and it caused two different results as well. To, so the remediation isn't determined, and uh, if uh, we, you use the table, uh, it mentioned table three and line to group three. Uh, so for shorter wavelengths, uh, it's under 120 centimeter. The specified maximum gap is too lenient. Yes. So and the other side, when you measure. Uh, and the specified maximum gap, uh, you measure it uh, more than four meter uh, under the uh, the straight edge. It's uh, too uh, too strict, too heavy. So you can measure the same floor uh, with uh, not the same uh, way, and the result is not the explicit one. Yeah. Uh, about the VDMA, it's uh, my opinion that it's without any cost effectiveness, so it's very, very uh, expensive. So this problem leads to much confusion and dispute uh, between the contracting partners. So that's why we use together <coughs> uh, the <coughs> shrinkage compensating concrete building. Uh, the American standards, the FFFL and uh, the FMIN uh, system. Uh, the FFFL system about FF is a flatness, floor flatness, means numbers control the floor's local bumpiness. The uh, FL, the floor levelness, numbers control the floor's uh, local inclination relative to horizontal. And the higher the floors FF and FL numbers, the better is the flatness and the levelness. And very important that FF and FL system employs a statistic sampling procedure. Uh, the F means simply measure 100% of each uh, defined wheel track and uh, then apply six different uh, pass and fall fail uh, criteria simultaneously to determine the acceptability. For example, uh, F min 100 means uh, a full speed operation uh, of uh, very uh, narrow eyes uh, for the lift tracks. We measure uh, this with this small and clever device, uh, like it is the D meter uh, one. Uh, we use it for random traffic floors and we use the same device for uh, narrow eyes in uh, with a special method that you can see here uh, with a special evaluation uh, system uh, with. So uh, that was the two sides of the coin and <coughs> a brief summary about uh, our activity of our, this, uh, this idea. So uh, what is the result of when shrinkage compensating jointless float and uh, the measurement works together uh, with FFFL or the FMIN uh, system? It uh, results uh, 80 or 90 percent fewer T-armon joints first. And we can uh, increase uh, the uh, floor panels uh, up to uh, 1,600 uh, square meter with, uh, without any joint and any curling. Uh, curling. And the floor thickness uh, reduce can reduce uh, with uh, three to five centimeter uh, with the same load capacity because of we have no stress uh, in the concrete. And uh, it uh, also reduce floor and uh, vehicle maintenance as well. So, the valuable final product is, you can see there, less or no maintenance floor, controlled floor construction, and uh, uh, optimal drivability of the lift tract and the efficiency, efficiency of the warehouse uh, enhanced. And for the management, uh, we hope that it means no stress. And never forget that people do 
what you inspect, not what you expect. So, thank you for your attention. If you are interested in this technology, we are happy to cooperate uh, with you. If you have a project coming up and if you think that is, uh, it would make sense to use this technology, take our business cards and our brochures. So, thank you for attention.